from leaning not on our own understanding to casting down wicked imaginations. We're here to study to show ourselves approved here a little and there a little. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Stick to the Script. Let's read the Bible now. Welcome, welcome, brothers and sisters, grace and peace, and welcome to another edition to Stick to the Script Bible Talk Show, where we teach from a biblical perspective, line upon line, precept upon precept, here little and there little. Please like, subscribe to the page, get you something to jot these scriptures down, because we move rather rapidly through the scriptures. We are Christian Israelites who keep the commandments of God and of faith in Jesus Christ. This is an Israel of God production coming to you from Phoenix, Arizona. So what we're going to do is go join my co-workers, my brethren in the vineyard, and let's meet the panel. So we have formerly from Baton Rouge now in the Bay Area doing labor down there to get the Lord vineyard started and jump up up jumping and running uh we got brother james how you doing hebrew doing well brother amen praise the lord it's a it's a blessing to be on the show with you guys again today and my brother jordan and brother mike murray uh it's a pleasure to be here and uh and i'm, I'm ready to get it rolling praise the lord in jesus name likewise my brother we got from rialto california uh iog my OG brother, uh, what's going on, co-worker, brother Mike? I'm good, bro. Bless. It's great to be here, man. Looking forward to the show. Praise the Lord. And from South Carolina, IOG, we got brother Jordan, one uh, a new reader here, labor in the vineyard. How you doing? He be doing, my brother. Yeah, I'm good, family. Grace and peace. Uh, definitely a blessing to be here. Uh, first time on the show, so definitely looking forward to it. In Jesus' name, me too, likewise. So the topic today, discussion today, and our subject will be the power of the tongue. The power of the tongue. And we're going to let our brother James kick it off so we can see what type of information we're going to get from this book. If you can't read it, don't believe it. Take it over, my brother. Thank you, brother Alvin. Um well, like you said, the title of today's discussion is The Power of the Tongue. And you can get some negative powers and you can get something positive out of it. It's your choice. So today we're going to kind of take a look-see at both sides of the coin. So we're going to start in Proverbs chapter 18 and we're going to start at verse 4. Proverbs 18 and 4. Brother Jordan, go ahead and read it. The words of a man's mouth are as deep as waters. In the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. Yes, sir. Skip down to verse 6 and continue. A fool's lips enter in contention, and his mouth calleth for strokes. Yes. A fool's, a fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down in the innermost parts of the belly. See, we see right there in those group of verses, we talking about your words can have negative effects on yourself for sure and other people. It says the words of a talebearer are as wounds, you see. You can hurt somebody with, with going around saying things, uh, you know, from person to person about somebody else. And you ought not do that. So skip on down to verse 20 and continue, brother. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with yeah. the increase of his lips shall he be filled. And we're going to look Death at that later on, a man's uh, uh, belly being satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. But go ahead and continue, brother. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So now let's go to Genesis 1. But the reason I went to that Proverbs 18 was that one verse, verse 21, it says, Death and life are in the power of that tongue. And you got negative and positive 
is in the power of the tongue. So you have to decide which ones you're going to speak over your life, in your future, in your household. Okay? So now, let's go look at Genesis 1, and we're going to show you some positive speaking from the Lord. We're going to go all the way back to him. Genesis 1, my brother. Start at verse, um, where are we going to start? Verse 3. Start at verse 3 and look at what the Lord said right here. Go ahead and read. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. See that? See, he said, let there be light. And by the hands of his angels, hey, there was light. But he spoke that. So now, skip down to verse 6 and continue. Go ahead and read it. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. Skip down to verse 9 and continue. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. So what the reason I'm going here is to show you that the Lord spoke these things, and they came about. And likewise, in your own life, you can speak some negative things into your life. You speak some positive things in your life. And whatever kind of angels you got circling around you, uh, those are the ones that can with your assistance, with you handling things that you can handle with your own power, they can assist you in getting them things, getting the wheels rolling toward those things you want in your life, whether they be good or bad. Skip on down to verse 11, my brother, and continue. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And it was so. Skip on down to 14 and continue. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And they are still there doing that same thing that the Lord spoke right now. Skip on down, my brother, to verse uh, 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 20 and continue. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And don't we still have creatures in the water? Don't we still have fowl that fly in the air right now? Yes, we do, because they were spoken, and here they are. Skip down to verse 24 and continue. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And it was so. What about verse 26? And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. See, we see that the Lord said, let us make man and man is still here. Man still have dominion over the, the animals and over the, the, uh, the creatures that's in the water. The Lord spoke it, and here it is still happening today. Now let's get one more verse, verse 31. What did it say? And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And it was very good, brothers and sisters. But what happened? He thought it, and then he spoke it. So you have to be careful what you speak into your life, whether it be something negative or whether it be something positive. So now let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, Brother Joy. Ephesians 4, and we're going to read verse 29, and then we're going to skip to verse 31. Ephesians 4 and 29. What does it say, brother? Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good that, to the... And he said, listen, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Go ahead and read. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may yes. minister grace unto the hearers. Do y'all see that? He said, let some good come out, your mouth, out of your mouth where it would help somebody. Skip down to 31 and continue. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Y'all see that? Get that evil speaking away from yourself. So now, let's go to Proverbs 15, my brother. And we're going to start at the first verse. Proverbs 15 and verse 1. Go ahead and read it. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words that, still. A soft answer turn away wrath. And I've seen that with my own two eyes. A brother was ready to box with me, and I hit him with some kind words, and it just deflated him like you stuck a pin 
in a in a little uh, a volleyball, okay? The air just went right on out of them, okay, with them kind words. But go ahead and continue, brother. But grievous words stir up anger. Yeah. The tongue of the the tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools pour out foolishness. Yes, sir. Verse four. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perversiveness therein a breach in the spirit. I want y'all to focus on the positive wholesome tongue. It said the wholesome tongue is a tree of life. What verse seven say, brother? The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the foolish doeth not so. Y'all see that a wholesome tongue? Uh, 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 it says in verse four, the tree of life. In verse seven, a wise person disperse knowledge. That's what we should be focusing on, focusing on using with our mouth, saying some positive words, some building words, some creative type words. Skip down to verse uh, uh, 23 and continue, brother. A man have joy by the answer of his mouth, and a word spoken in due season, how good is it? What about verse 26? The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant words. The words of the pure are pleasant words. Let's go Proverbs 10, my brother. We're going to go 19 through 21. Proverbs 10, verse 19. What did it say? In the multitude of the words, there one if not sin, but he that refrain of his lips is wise. The and tongue of the judge. It's just not even say anything, brothers and sisters. Sometimes it's better to not say one word and you will be appear to be a wise person. Go ahead and read. The tongue of the just is as choice silver. The heart of the wicked is little worth. Mm -hmm. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for one of wisdom. You see that? He said, the heart of the righteous feed many people. Indeed it does. So now, let's go First Peter 3, and then we're going to go 8 through 10, my brother. Because I want you to focus on, uh, I'm talking to the audience, Focus on the positive that your tongue can have on people, the things you say out of your mouth. We already know that a fraud of tongue or somebody that wants to speak some things that's not wise uh, and harmful, we already seen that. But let's look at some positive stuff. Let's go First Peter 3 and verse 8. What that say, brother? Finally, be ye all one mind, having compassion one of another. Love is brethren. Mm -hmm. Be pitiful. Be courteous. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but countrywise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. For he now that will love life. He said, he said, don't render evil for evil or railing for railing, but on the contrary, somebody say something harsh against you, give them some words that'll bless them, okay? You don't have to stoop to that level. One more verse, brother. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Do y'all see that? Do you want some positive energy in your life and some long days? Then you keep evil speaking out of your mouth, okay? Let's go Matthew chapter uh, 15 because I'm running low on time. I'm not going to go 12 because I know one of my other brothers going to hit that. So let's go Matthew 15 and let's see. Let's go to 3, Matthew 15 and 23. What that say, brother? 15 and 23. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. But he answered and said, This Canaanite woman that come, hold on, this is Canaanite woman that's coming to Jesus, right? He wants something from him, but let's see what happens. Go ahead and read. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. So but even, he though answered Jesus his... said that I'm, that even though Jesus said, I'm only dealing with Israel, and this woman still persisted. Go ahead and read. But he answered and said, it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she mm -hmm. said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour.
Brother Jordan, what verse did you stop on? Uh, I ended at 28. Okay, the reason I went here, brothers and sisters, that even though this woman was a stranger, and Jesus would told us straight out he wasn't dealing with no strangers, she kept speaking positive, and her faith came out through her positive words, and then Jesus told her in, in verse 28, he said, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee, even as thou wilt, and her daughter was made whole, from that very hour. And I'm I'm just trying to show that when you have some faith and your faith is positive and your and your words are positive, and this woman knew that Jesus had the power to heal her daughter, and that's what she went with, and that's what she got. So now let's go Proverbs 31 and look at this virtuous woman. Proverbs 31, and let's look at this virtuous woman. I got one more spot after this. 31 and 10, brother. Go ahead and read it. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. She will do him good and not evil. Go ahead. What was the verse, brother? Uh, uh, verse she 12. Will, Go ahead and read. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Now, let's see about this verse. Strength and honor are her clothing. And she shall rejoice in time to come. Uh huh. She opened her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Y'all see that in her tongue is the law of kindness, and we have also read uh, earlier that that a tongue of a righteous person and a wholesome tongue is a tree of life, and a virtuous woman is like that. And then we saw that that woman who came to Jesus about her daughter. Okay, so now let's go to my last spot, First Timothy chapter four. And we have to be real careful of the things that come out of our mouth because, believe it or not, people are watching us and they are listening. First Timothy chapter four, my brother, we gonna read two verses, 12, and then skip to 16. Go ahead and read. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Take heed unto thyself and unto the, unto the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Okay, so now when you come up to verse 12, it said we're supposed to be an example even in our words, brothers and sisters. And then down in verse 16, it says, take heed unto yourself and unto the doctrine and continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and those that hear you. So people are paying attention and we should focus uh, on positive words coming out of our mouth and refrain from bad conversation, brothers and sisters, not only for ourselves, but for us. And that is uh, my part in this title. And I want to turn it back over to the panel. All right, all right, brother. Thanks for that edifying scriptures, man. Hey, I like that uh, you showed that, you know, the power of the tongue and that our words actually can affect other people. Uh, just like you saw, you saw how the woman, she spoke positively and she showed her faith and it affected how the Lord blessed her. And that scripture said, the last one that we just read, it said, you can save yourself and those that hear you. But you show the good, the bad, you show the positive and the negative. But one thing you also show is that we get to choose. Just like the Lord placed the commandments on, he said, choose like and live, we can choose good, wholesome, upright, righteous, edifying words and bless ourselves and bless everybody that hears us. We also saw that there's a time to speak and also that there's a time to refrain from speaking. So I thank you for those scriptures, man. God bless you. Now turn Praise the Lord in Jesus' time. name. Praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Uh, edifying, Brother James. Uh, like how you showed the power of the tongue in Proverbs 8, that uh, death and life is in the power of the tongue. So we must be careful on how we utilize it and how you went to uh, Genesis 1 and showed us how God said, let that be, and it was so. You see what I'm saying? Even created us and brought forth life 
he spoke the word and 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 he he uh he brought it about you see what i'm saying and 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 as opposed to that you know satan he spoke some words to man in the garden where it deceived him and it brought about death so that proves you know according to the book word that you was reading that death and life is in the power of the tongue and uh you also showed that uh that it could bring forth uh corrupt communication uh tail bearing and you showed us a soft answer to, to turn away wrath and diffuses a situation uh brother james you also showed in uh first timothy that last script if i'm not mistaken that uh we must be uh an example in words you know so when you're utilizing your tongues you got to be an example in words and in deeds to not only to save yourself but others as well and that proves indeed that death and life is in the power of the tongue it just depends on how you utilize it so edifying scriptures and i hope the people was edified because i was definitely edified my brother and i turn it back over to the panel okay so we're gonna keep going with this um let's pick it up in luke 6 verse 45 and then we're gonna move on luke 6 and 45 a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. So we see here that our words show what's inside of us. A good man is going to bring out good words. An evil man is going to bring out evil words. That's just like uh, during the time of the apostles, uh, Ananias and Sapphira, they spoke a vow and they didn't fulfill their vow. They wanted to keep back part of the money, but the apostle told us, sister, he said, you hadn't lied unto man, but unto God. But their words caused them to be killed, caused them to lose their life. Whereas they would have kept their vow, they would have had a good reward, but they didn't keep it. They had an evil reward. Go to Psalms 34. Pick it up verse 11. We'll read through 13. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desire of life and love of many days that he may see good? Keep the tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. So we see that if you want long days and you desire life and you want to see good, keep your tongue from speaking guile. But in order to do that, you got to deal with what's on the inside of you. That's why he said, hearken unto me and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. It is the fear of God that governs your words and your actions. But let's keep moving. Let's go to uh, Proverbs 15. Pick it up at verse 1. We'll read through soft, the skip. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perversiveness therein a breach in the spirit. So now we see there that the perversiveness is a breach in the spirit. Now, if you filled yourself up with the word of God, he said, the spirit, the word I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. When you have a person that's speaking perverseness, that's a breach in the spirit. That's a breach in the word that is within them. But a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Those words are going to be edifying. It's going to be pure. It's going to be easily entreated. And it's going to be peaceable. And a wise person is going to use knowledge of right. But the fool, they're going to pour out foolishness. The soft answer will turn away wrath. But the grievous words, that's going to just stir up. That's going to escalate things. It's not going to bring peace. Skip down to verse 7, brother. Okay. But the scripture also says, you know, the lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the fool, they don't do so. So you also got not watch what you're speaking you also got to watch what words you're listening to 
Go to Job 15, pick it up at verse 2. We're going to read all the way through 6. Should a wise man utter vain knowledge and fill his belly with the east wind? Should he reason with unprofitable talk or with speeches wherewith he can do no good? Yea, thou castest off fear and restrainest prayer before God. For thy mouth uttereth thine iniquity, and thou choosest the tongue of, of the crafty. Thine own mouth condemneth thee, and not I. Yea, thine own lips testify against thee. So in this we see that it is your own words that you have to give account for. They're going to condemn you, and they're going to testify against you. Because every idle word that we speak, we have to give account for. It says the mouth uttered iniquity, and they choose the tongue of the craft. But he asked the questions in the beginning. He said, should a wise man utter vain knowledge and fill his belly with east wind? Should he reason with unprofitable talk, with speeches wherein there is no good, the wise doeth not so? The wicked, they cast off fear, and they restrain themselves from even praying to the Lord. Let's keep going. Go to Ecclesiastes 5, pick it up at verse 2. We will skip to 4 through 7. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore, let, the, let thy words be few. So when he, he said, let your words be few, because God is always watching. He's always observing what we're doing and what we're saying. Skip to verse 4. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it. For he have no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than that, sh that thou shouldest vow and not pay. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore, should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work with thine hands? For in the multitude of dreams and many words, there are also divers vanities, but fear thou God. So it is the fear of the Lord that's going to govern everything that you do. In multitude of dreams, there are, you know, there are many words and diverse vanities. He told us, don't let our mouth cause our flesh to sin. They have another saying like that in the world. It said, don't let your body, don't let your mouth write checks that your body can't cash. Because he said, you know, don't say this before the angel that it was an error. You don't want God angry at your voice. But let's keep going. Let's go to uh, Psalms 15 and pick it up at verse 1. We're going to read through 4. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and work of righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contemned. But he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not. So now we see here that the person that walk uprightly and work righteousness and speak truth in his own heart. Because remember, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. This person don't backbite with his tongue. They don't speak evil of his neighbor. They don't take up a reproach against their neighbor. And the person that is vile, they contend. And they don't honor them that fit, don't fear the Lord. But he swear to his own hurt and change not. Even when he keep a vow, even when it's not profitable to them, they are not going to compromise what they have said. Because their word is their bond. Go to Psalms 50, pick it up in verse 16. And read through 23. But unto the wicked, God saith, what hast thou to do to declare my statues, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee, when thou sawest a thief, then thou consentest with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sittest, and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thy own mother's son. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou, 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 though thou is that I was altogether such a one as thyself, but I will reprove thee 
and set them in order before thine eyes. Now consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Whoso offer of praise, glorify of me. And to him that order of his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God. So now we see here that the wicked, that's the person that don't declare the statutes of the Lord. And even though they took that covenant into their mouth, you know, they, they hate instruction and they cast the words of the Lord behind them. These type of people, when they see a thief, they don't contend with it. They partakers with adultery because they don't speak on it. But when it come to saying something good about their brother, evil come out of their mouth and they frame deceit. So we see here that by not even, on this case, by not speaking and not speaking the truth, you actually doing evil. But in this last scripture, he said, whoso offered praise glorify me, to him that orders his conversation aright, he will show the salvation of God. So our very salvation actually depends on the words that we speak. Go to Matthew 12, pick it up at verse 35. Read through 37. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Just like the other scripture said, that our own words condemn us and they testify against us. Because in the end of this thing, we have to give account of every idle word that we speak. And we have to give account of this in the day of judgment. But he told us again, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bring forth good things. And an evil man bring forth evil things. So we see that this, whatever, whatever we're speaking, this is come out, coming out of us. Like the scriptures say, the things, it ain't the things that go into the body of the foul man, but the things that come out. Go to Proverbs 18, 21. This is the last place. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So here we see again, we read this before, but we're going to read it again. And I'm quite sure Brother Alvin got this same scripture in his. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. You can speak death, you can speak evil, you can speak uh, hard things, you can speak wicked things, or you can speak fruitful things that give life, that edify. That's when you're going to be that tree of life. But we got to have this in our mentality that the they that love it shall eat the fruit of it. If they love death, they're going to go for that. But if they love life, they're going to go for the wholesome, righteous, upright words. So I thank everybody for listening. We pray that we got some understanding. I'll turn it back over to the panel. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Brother Mike, for them edifying scriptures. Death and life come forth from the power of the tongue, depending on what type of individual is operating and using it and how they are using it, like Brother Mike showed us in the scripture, that a good servant, he would speak knowledge of right and bring forth wise counsel. But uh, a wicked tongue will only utilize it in a form of uh, giving you deception, deceit, and something that is contrary to the laws of God. We see that Brother Mike uh, pointed out how in Acts the fifth chapter, how Brother and his wife end up facing the penalty of death from utilizing that tongue the wrong way. And they end up bearing false witness and breaking the laws of God. And that is sin. And the wages of sin is none other than death, brothers and sisters. Uh, we also see that whatever comes out of your mouth, like Brother Mike showed, it comes from your mind. It comes from your heart and it exposes who you truly are. So I hope the people was edified and got some understanding from the scriptures, what that brother put forth. And I turn it back over to the panel.
Yeah, bro, the Giants froze. There you go. Can y'all hear me, brothers? Yep, I can hear him. Yeah, I can hear him too, but I don't think he can hear us. Mike Chick, Mike Chick, can y'all hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, James. Can you hear us? Okay. Brother Mike, you did a you did a fantastic job on uh showing that a person really has to be careful uh with their own lips. I mean, we went to Job 15 and he said it plain that your own lips and your own mouth will condemn you and testify against you which you also pointed out that hey you're going to be judged by your words then even solomon said in ecclesiastes which was giving us some advice he said don't let your mouth call you to sin because it will and we know those sins they originate in your head then they come down and come out of your mouth then they manifest themselves into some actions and some activities that thou orders not to do okay and so and even when we go to the psalm it says don't give your mouth to evil don't give your mouth to slandering anybody because if you do sooner or later with the lord having that long memory he will reprove you and you will have to pay for that so it is better to keep that evil conversation from your mouth do some praying read your book every day that is the first and the biggest and quickest way that you can help yourself correct your tongue the closer you stay to the lord and the closer you stay to your word and i turn it back over to the panel praise the lord praise the lord in jesus name so let's deal with my segment and we're gonna uh we're gonna rehearse what brother mike showed in ecclesiastes 5 and 2 because this is good practice so we could refrain from using our tongue in an inappropriate way that's not good in the eyes of god uh ecclesiastes 5 and 2 my brother just read that be not rash with thy mouth and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before god for god is in heaven and thou upon earth therefore let thy words be few Yes, sir. Let your words be few. Few. Don't be so hasty to the other things out of your mouth because the next moment ain't promised to you, and you gonna be judged by what you speak. You gonna stand accountable for it. In Matthew twelve and thirty-seven, we gonna see that. Read that. We gonna rehearse that again. Just read verse thirty-seven, my brother. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. That's right. So you got to let your words be few and let's let the Messiah tell us how to operate with this tongue in Matthew 5 and 37. Matthew 5 and 37. Just read that, my brother. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. That's right. You see what I'm saying? You get to talking, going all off the deep end, and then next thing you know, you done put some corruptible out of your mouth that's not appropriate with God. So this is how we're supposed to operate with this tongue in James, the fourth chapter. We're going to read verses 13 and 14. See, the book on point it out. I don't even need to do that much talking. Go ahead and read, brother. Go ahead and read 13 Go and 14. Go to now. Go to now. Yea, that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue, and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? Is it even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanisheth away? That's right. You coming out your mouth making all these plans and stuff like that, and your life is like a vapor. Is is there one minute, then it's gone the next? Let's go to Matthew the sixth chapter and show you what Jesus said about trying to make preparation for a time that's not even promised to you. Read verse thirty six. Verse 34, my brother, Matthew 6 and 34. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. That's right. Because just because you plan something, that don't, that don't mean it's going to work out that way. But Brother James is going to tell us, you know, how we're supposed to operate 
in our preparation. James 4 and we verses 15 through 16, my brother. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings, all such rejoicing is evil. That's right. Yo, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Now you boasting and you rejoicing in evil and the Lord don't take that lightly. So let's go to Isaiah, the 59th chapter, and the Lord is going to tell you how you operating with that tongue. And we're going to read verse 13, my brother. In transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. Words of falsehood, you uttering from your heart or from your mind, like Mike pointed out, that which coming out of your mind come forth from your mouth come forth from your mouth and it expose who you truly are. You see what I'm saying? So if it's the Lord's will, we're gonna do this or do that, then that's how you supposed to come off with this uh with this power of the tongue with wise counsel and wise information that come forth, forth from the word of God and not out your own uh, mindset. Let's go to Romans, the first chapter and read verse 25, because this is what you're doing. You're deceiving yourself. You, you think it's the truth, but the Lord is going to tell you what it is, truly. Read verse 25, my brother. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator? Who is blessed forever amen yes sir so you serving the creature you serving yourself or you serving satan he's the creature the lord is the creator who is blessed forever amen you uttering things that you think is going to take place and it might not be in the plan of the lord so therefore you putting forth lies as opposed to the truth let's go to matthew the 12th chapter and this is showing you the power that the tongue have it consists of life and death. Matthew 12 and 36. Go ahead and read that, my brother, because it's going to tell you something that Mike told us in his segment. We're going to rehearse it again. Read that for me, my brother. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. That's right. So be careful what you say. Like we be having situations going on and, and people want to put their input in and their opinion in and it might be against God. And you think you got good intentions, but if it's against God, you in a bogus position. So you got to be mindful of what you're saying and what you're doing and how you operate. Let's go to Ephesians in the fourth chapter and pick it up at verse 29 and just read verse 29 because Brother James, I think he touched on this. Read that, my brother. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So that's telling you right there that death and life is in the power of the tongue. Corrupt communication is going to bring forth death. That would be the residual effect. But if you bring an edification according to this wholesome word of Jesus Christ, you're going to bring grace which is the free gift of God, which brings forth life to the to the hearers. You see what I'm saying? And they can uh, overall receive salvation from this. But read verse 31 for me, my brother. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. You see what that tongue is? That tongue could bring forth bitterness, anger, Wrath, you know what I'm saying? A soft answer, turn away wrath. That's what Brother James showed us. So the Lord is telling us right here and giving us instruction on how we need to operate with that power of that tongue to bring forth life. Let's go to uh, James, the third chapter, and uh, read verse 14 and 15 and give some more information on this tongue and how we need to utilize it. Go ahead and read. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. So if you got strife and envying in your heart, that's what's going to come out your mouth. And that don't come from the Father above in the third heaven on, in the, on the majesty on high sitting on the majesty on high that comes from the earth and that is devilish and we're going to show you that 
these type of seducing spirits is manipulating the people today to take vengeance on their brothers and sisters when they don't know they're not even wrestling with their brothers and sisters for spiritual wickedness in high places because they are the ones that are in, that will be influencing these individuals. First Timothy 4 and read verses 1 and 2, my brother. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. That's right. It's going to be imprinted in their mind. This is how I need to operate. This is how I need to operate. Being a product of your environment, how you was brought up, being influenced by people that is influenced by these unclean spirits, and any man touch you, you want to uh, react and seek vengeance of yourself instead of dealing with the word of God and let the Lord handle it when he say vengeance is the Lord and let him iron it out. You see what I'm saying? Let's go to Proverbs 18. Matter of fact, let's go to 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, and read verse 3, 3 through 4 and get some more information on this. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned into fables. That's right. Nobody gonna want to hear what the truth of the matter is. They gonna want to hear these fables. They gonna deal with what they've been traditionally taught. You see what I'm saying by these seducing spirits through man that then got through them and that's why they operating in the power of their tongue with deceitfulness and death. Let's continue and go to uh, Proverbs the 18th chapter and rehearse this verse again in verse 21 so we can understand that, that this is indeed a fact. Go ahead and read that. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. That's right. And that fruit pertains to death. Because if you heap to yourself a lot of teachers that's going to teach you fables, that's the power of their tongue bringing forth death upon you and everybody else they influence. Let's go to Revelation 16 chapter and show you an example of this power being distributed that's going to bring forth death that's brought about by Satan. Revelation 16 and pick it up at 13 and read to 14. Let's show you how this power can get the world to fight against God and be destroyed. Go ahead and read, and I, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth into the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. That they go that un, that unclean that unholy trinity right there the dragon the beast prophet utilizing that tongue to gather the kingdom of the whole world to fight against God and it's gonna bring forth death in the, the count of uh, numbers that we can't even count you won't be even able to bury all these people the Lord gonna have the the, the beast the summer on them and and, and the fowls the winter on them so they can eat up all these bodies to get them off the earth. This is the power of this tongue. Revelation and 19, go ahead and read so we can, we can, we can get another uh, witness on that and update that. Go ahead and read that. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. All from the power of the tongue, brothers and sisters from the instigation of these unclean angels and the and, and, and a rulership, the secular leader and the uh, temporal leader that's going to be running this great tribulation. All men on the on, on, on the uh, the western side of the European Union to go against them. and they're going to die without mercy. They're going to drink of the wine of the Lord that have no mixture and ain't no dilution to it. And they gonna suffer it all 
just because the power of the tongue, how they was manipulated and deceived to go against God. Let's go to Daniel the seventh chapter, my brother, and we're going to show you again another witness to validate how this power of the tongue is utilized by this false prophet or this little horn or what we call the abomination of desolation and how he's going to manipulate the world, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Verse 11, you don't skip. I beheld then, because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Yes, sir. And that's going to take place when they try to come up against God. When they get gathered together down right there, God Almighty in the valley of Jehoshaphat, the Lord is going to show you who's really in control. But then you say, I beheld the great words which the, uh, this little horn has spoke. Power of his tongue. He manipulated this thing. But the Lord is going to deal with it accordingly. And this is example, sisters and brothers, for you to recognize what type of uh, effect can come from this tongue. Read verse 19 to 21, my brother. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron, and his nails of brass, which devour, break in pieces, and stamp the residue with his feet. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes, and the mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them. By the power of that tongue. The power of that tongue, brothers and sisters. His look was more, you know, stout than his fellows. He was more fierce. But let's continue. Let's go to the last scripture and look at that individual and show you how he operates and who he operating under in 2 Thessalonians. And, and, and we're going to uh, show you the residual effect. I'm going to put on these people for operating with that tongue and wrong power and exemplifying death as opposed to life. Second, Thess uh, Second Thessalonians 2, and start at verse 9 and read to 12, my brother. Go ahead. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusions, that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. This is through the power of the tongue. As opposed to them receiving the love of the truth from one, from one that utilized that tongue to bring forth life, they receive deception and it's going to receive damnation because they receive the power of the that will bring forth death and I turn it back over to my brother in the panel and I hope somebody was out of the fire Mike, check. Can y'all hear me? Yep, we got you. Okay, Brother Alvin, that was a very uh, diverse set of scriptures that you brought, my brother. It was excellent. I mean, you went into even showing how not only do you have to be mindful of the words that come out of your mouth, you have to be mindful of the words and the tongues of others that you listen to and that you allow their words to get into your mind, okay? Even down to you uh fighting against god and his saints and his angels and even down to you serving the beast and the false prophet down in those end days okay because you're doing it now uh that was very mm -hmm. very good right there brother then you also pointed out which was significant that you have to be mindful of your own words because you could be 
speaking against God with, 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 with some things that you're saying. And that's why you have the verse that says, hey, uh, be, 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 be quick to hear, but slow to speak. Slow to speak. Because yep. you really have to calculate what you're going to say because you might be speaking against God. Like we can read where they spoke against Moses, then a couple of verses later, it said they spoke against God. You see? Mm -hmm. So so you even have to be mindful who you're speaking against because you could be talking against somebody that's trying to handle God's business, okay? And then another yes, thing that you, and another thing you pointed out, Brother Alvin, is we should acknowledge the Lord in things that we're doing and things that we're saying and even things in the future by by something just as simple as, hey, Lord willing. Thy will be done. Or some people say, if the Lord say the same, we'll see you next week. You know what I'm saying? So uh, exactly. you, had a, you had a very diverse uh, set of scriptures to show us on this subject, brother. Great job. Praise the Lord. And I turn it back. Praise over the Lord. Lord. Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. All right. Amen. James was right. That's a diverse set of scriptures there, man. You went from uh, showing that Everything we speak is before God and that some of the things we speak ain't in accordance with his will. We boast of this, we boast of that, and we say we're going to do this and we're going to do that. But we don't even pray about it first to see if it's even in God's will or it's okay to do it. We just boast that, hey, we're going to do this and we're going to do it. We don't know, even know if the next day is promised to us or the next minute. And it showed that that was even evil. But what I also like is how you show, you know, the Lord don't like us to be lukewarm. We want us to be hot or cold. But we always try to straddle the fence. The scripture said, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. If you go beyond that, you are lying. Plain Pray. and simple. We try to sugarcoat stuff, try to soft soak it, make it, you know, pleasurable for the person. But sometimes people need to be rebuked sharply, you see, and, and you show that. And you also show that, you know, you know, what we say, you know, we do have to be in accordance with God's will. But it also showed that uh, we speak repression and revolt when we do these things. We speak against God and we don't even know it. But especially, man, I really like how you tied that uh Proverbs 18, 21 to the end time with the beast and the false prophet, how they spoke lies, you know, and they had unclean spirits speaking unclean words and deceived the people and had them go into going against God. And that comes down to this one thing. And that's James 3 and 8. It says, the tongue can no man tame, but we know that the word of God can tame it. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. So we poison. have That's to right. be mindful of the power of the tongue. Thanks for the scriptures, brother. That's right. God bless you. Praise the Lord in Jesus' name. So thank my brothers, my co-workers, Brother Jordan from South Carolina, ILG, Brother Mike from Rialto, California, Brother James from the in the, in the Bay Area, ILG. And uh, we pray that the people was edified we are here in the ministry of reconciliation to warn the people. Fear God, keep his commandments. Remember, if you can't read it, don't believe it. And peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Peace. Peace. From leaning not on our own understanding to casting down wicked imaginations, we're here to study to show ourselves approved. Here a little and there a little. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Stick to the Script. Let's read the Bible now.
atmosphere of holiness. 